Here are my four proofs for congruence and then for similarity, okay? Now, really quickly, I'm not gonna draw the pairs because the whole point is like if they're the same, then I don't need to draw it once and then exactly the same again, right? So congruence is if you have a pair of triangles, right? With, um, if I have three sides, right, that exactly match up, that's an SSS proof. And the corresponding proof for similarity is you still have three pairs of sign that correspond, but they're just not equal. They're just in proportion. Like all of these ones are twice as big as that, or all of them are three times as big as that. Similarity. SAS means you're going to get two sides and the included angle. Now, this is the shortest way I've ever encountered of saying it. Okay? Sides, so it says, plural, so you're going to get more pairs of sides than just the one, right? About, which is meant to be sort of the opposite of included, right? An angle can be included by two sides, and the sides can be about the angle, right? So that is a technical word, not like just about. It means the opposite of included. Sides about the equal angles, if they're in proportion, you're good, okay? AAS, we're familiar with this one, right? You can have two angles, which means you really have all the angles. That's equiangular. Once you have a side, then you've locked in the size of the triangle, right? So no longer are they like similar to each other, but if one of the sides is the same length, then they're exactly the same size. And then there's this awkward RHS one down the bottom here, okay? Now, there's a reason why he's the poor cousin of this whole lot, because if you have RHS, let's just quickly have a look at what this looks like. So. AAS is like, here's alpha, there's beta, and any of the sides is fine. Okay. Now what would this look like? So you've got a right angled triangle, that's a given. Okay. And then you have the hypotenuse, that's the H, right angle, hypotenuse, and then you have one of the other sides. Okay. Now hold on a second, being that this is a right angled triangle, if you know, like we usually call the sides A, B, and C, if you know A and C, it is trivial to work out B, right? Like you can just do Pythagoras, then you've got all three sides, and then you just say this, rather than this mouthful, okay? So it's there, the reason why it works is because it implies this one. Once you have the hypotenuse and shorter side of a right angle triangle, you have all the sides, okay? Now, just a quick note to again ram home because it's such an easy thing to do. When you are proving SAS, right, SAS is the most picky because it needs the included angle. Okay? Now to illustrate why, rather than just like moving straws around, which you can do and it's fun, mathematically <coughs> proving like rigorously why you need the included angle is because of a situation like this. You remember our old friend, the sine rule, right? The sine rule would be able to tell us what theta is, right? Help me work it out. What would I write? I'm trying to find theta. Sine theta. Sine theta. On root three. It's equal to sine thirty. Equal sine thirty degrees on one. You happy with that? Just this on this, this on this. Okay. Let's crunch it a little bit. So I've got sine theta over here. Root three is going to go over. And then sine thirty, of course, is a half. Right. So what I've got over here is root three on two. Okay. But you have been trained to avoid the sine rule and use the cosine rule wherever you possibly can because at this point, you have to be careful. You have to say what? You have to say theta equals, right? What's, what's your base angle? What's the first time that it's equal to root 3 It's 60 degrees. But of course, that's only one of the things it could be, right? It could also be 120. There's an acute version and there is an obtuse version. Now, what would this look like? 60 degrees. Well, clearly that's the one I've kind of... No, sorry. That's not the one I've really drawn here, right? This theta is obtuse. So if the diagram were to scale, which it's not, but on this diagram, that's got to be the 120 case. You see? Right? What would that case look like? you still got the root 3. you still got the 30 degrees. But if you want this to be side length 1 and you want an angle of 60 degrees over here, right? Then you have to take this guy further so that it comes over to here. Sorry, my scale's not very good. But you see, now this is an acute angle, and I still love my one, right? Uh, another way of seeing this is it's the same triangle, but I flipped this side this way. See that? Okay. 
Now, have a look at these two triangles that I have just drawn. Okay, and for a second, forget the fact that we actually know what theta is. Okay, if I get rid of theta, I have side, 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 angle, angle. But because the angle is not included, <coughs> these triangles are completely different. They are not congruent, right? The reason they are not congruent, and they can't be unless it's included, is because the sine rule will give you two triangles, right, that are different to each other. They won't be congruent if you're trying to get similar lengths, and they won't be similar if you've got lengths that are in proportion, okay? So in fact, you know, <laughs> the funny thing about this is you, you discover this before you know what the sign rule is, okay? So we just say, because otherwise you'll be in trouble. But now you know enough mathematics to know why you actually can get two non-congruent triangles, even when you seem to have so much information that lines up. You don't have the information in the right spots to guarantee that all the features will line up. And okay. you can't have ASS, so. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Oh. You happy with that? So, by the way, just in case you're curious, because you can see, right, this creates <coughs> the familiar uh, 30, 60, 90 triangle, and this creates an isosceles triangle, which is completely different. Okay. So, very, very different things because of the sign rule. 